Hello, my name is Lee Latham. Welcome to Everything I Know About cPanel I Learned from S-Trace. This is a practical guide to using S-Trace to solving problems on your server. Uh, first, a little bit about what S-Trace is and what it's good for. Uh, the main purpose of S-Trace is to get rapid insight into the processes on your server. What are they actually doing? You're, you're probably used to seeing a process list and you see what processes are running, but that doesn't actually tell you what they're doing. S-Trace will let you attach to the process and see what it's actually doing. You do need to have some basic uh, bash command line skills to use S-Trace. Uh, nothing fancy, ls, cd, grep, uh, you'll be fine with that. If you don't have basic command line skills, it's probably going to be uh, a better investment for you to go ahead and do that first and then come back and do this and I think you'll find it very helpful. It's really not that hard. What is S-Trace? S-Trace traces system calls and signals. That's from the man page. Uh, it does beg the question, what are system calls and signals? System calls include things like read, write, open, close, stat, fork, execute, change mode, change ownership, all the things you're used to doing at the command line. Those are all system calls. They're calls to the operating system to do something for the program. Uh, signals include sigint, otherwise known as control C, uh, sig kill, otherwise known as kill minus nine. There are other ones as well. Those are the main ones you'll run across. Uh, we're going to have a simple example here first. This is a little Perl script. And don't worry if you don't know Perl. Uh, it's not important, but I'm going to explain basically what the script does, and then we're going to S-trace it and see how that works. Uh, the first thing you'll see is we're invoking Perl, uh, shebang, user bin Perl, and then a comment describing what the script does. Then you're going to see it's opening two files. It's opening Etsy password for reading. It's opening bizarro.txt for writing. After that, you'll see a for each loop. And it's going through each line of Etsy password and throwing in the word bizarro in some parentheses. Uh, this is not something you want to actually do on your server. This is an example. Uh, it's not actually changing Etsy password. We're just reading it and writing out to a file with some changes to, to, to illustrate the example. Uh, you'll see it doing the replacement. You'll see it adding 5 plus 7 for no reason whatsoever. And then you'll see it printing out the, our bizarro text file. And below that, you're going to see a comment. This comment will stand out in the S-trace. And you'll see why in a minute. The command we want to do to, uh, to, to, to make this happen, you do strace minus vv, very verbose, then minus s, 4092. That's very cryptic. All that means is the length of the, of the strings for each uh, system call uh, can be very long sometimes. And so we just want to see the first 4092 bytes. And then we execute test.pl. Then you'll see it actually executing the script. That's the execv command there. And you'll see after that is the environment that it runs in. Now after that, you're going to see reading the script into memory, and that's, you know, it, it'll, it's reading the Perl script here, in this case. And you'll see there's a little read, and then a parentheses, and three. And that's basically, that three is just a file descriptor put in there by strace to keep track of uh, opens and closes of files. So every file it opens will have a number after it, and so if you see a write to that number later, you know it's writing to that particular file. And so you'll see it there, it's reading the Perl script into memory, and then later on, you're going to see it processing and compiling that into code. Uh, but if you go down a little further, you want to, what you want to do is look for stuff that's meaningful to you. And in this case, we know it's opening some files. So here you can see it's opening Etsy password, uh, and you'll see that's equal to three. And then it's opening our bizarro.txt, and that is uh, equal to four there at the end. So uh, remember the four there for bizarro.txt in particular. The next thing you're going to see after that that's meaningful, you'll see it reading Etsy password into memory. And this is, and then right after that, you're going to see these BRK system calls. That's memory allocation. That's actually the processing. That's the for each loop executing. That's the replacement happening. Uh, that's the actual logic. And you see you don't actually see any logic there. And that's important to notice right there. Uh, and right below there, you'll see write for. We did the read for to open bizarro.txt for writing. And then write for you see it writing out the actual output, which looks a lot like Etsy password, except it has the word bizarro in there, so you can easily see it. And when you're seeing this in the S-trace, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see reading an Etsy password, you're going to see the BRKs, then you're going to see it writing the bizarro.txt. You do not actually see the logic happening, just the system calls. I need you to read a file. I need you to open a file. I need you to write a file. It's asking the OS to do things. Now we're going to have another simple example. Um, 
let's say an FTP user can't log in. So what you want to do is log in the server, find the process ID of FTPD. In this case, you want the authentication daemon, and you'll see that there. And then set up your strace command. You just strace minus vb, ff, that's for following forks in case it, it branches out into other processes. We'll talk more about that. Uh, and then the process ID, here we're just typing it in because we're just going and finding it. Then what you'll want to do is go to another terminal and FTP in. So now strace is, is logging everything that's happening to, with the FTP daemon. And you log in, make it fail, and then go back and, and control C your strace process. And what you want to do is look for errors. And what you'll see in this case is it can't find Etsy Pro FTBD, the username we try to type in. It doesn't exist. So you've learned a couple things. This is where cPanel puts the FTP user authentication files, and it's not there. Basically, the user doesn't exist in this case. A uh, very useful string right here for us tracing cPanel. Uh, CPSRVD is the main cPanel WHM process. That's, uh, that's pr pretty much always what you're going to want to look at if the problem is with cPanel. And what it's doing here is we see our minus VV for verbose. We see capital F, little f. That's following both kinds of forks. Uh, uh, cPanel does fork things a lot, so you definitely want to have that in there. And then we're outputting the output to a slash root slash strace.cpsrvd. Uh, we're putting it all to a file because we're going to get a lot of information and we're going to want to process that information manually, uh, as I'll show you. And then you'll see minus p, uh, backtick cat var run cpsrvd.pid. Uh, that's basically where we always store our running PID, so you don't have to go look it up. You can just throw that in there, and it'll always strace cpsrvd, which is probably what you want. Um, a couple of notes before we look at that. There, there's a philosophy you want to follow when you're trying to strace something, particularly on a busy server. You want to capture as little information as necessary. Strace can output a lot of information sometimes. And so your goal, your first goal, should be to capture just what you need. So what you'll generally want to do is set up your problematic action, get it ready to go to where you just have to hit a button to make it happen, set up your strace command, run it, execute your action, and then as soon as it gives you an error, boom, come back, kill the strace. So now, in theory at least, you've captured just the problem itself. So to do an easy example, well, let's say you're trying to add an email account and it doesn't work, and the error message is blank or it doesn't tell you something. We, you know, we've all seen that from time to time. Uh, this is a perfect example, test trace. So go ahead, get the email account ready to set up, put in the username, put in the password, everything but hitting the button to create it. Start your strace process, hit the button to create the account, control C your strace as soon as you get an error message. And what you can do then is check out your output and start at the bottom. You're almost always going to want to start at the bottom, I found. Sometimes at the beginning, usually at the beginning of your strace output, you're just loading libraries, you're just you'll see various checks for things, and it's not really the problem you're looking for. The problem usually happens at the end of your output. And so search from the bottom and search for the error message. In this case, what you'll see is there was a problem creating the email account, and that's in the HTML output. It stands to reason that the actual problem came before the error message. So you can save some time, search up for the error message, and you know the problem is above there. And in this case, if you just scroll up a little bit above the error message, what you'll see is uh, you could not write to home user Etsy domain password. And so this tells you a couple things. It tells you first that cPanel puts the email account authentication files under the user's home directory Etsy domain password. And also that the user couldn't write to it. In this case, if you go and look, you'll see that the file is owned by root. It's a common problem we run into. Uh, you don't want those files owned by root because uh, it will keep the user from being able to write to them, including making new accounts. There's actually another way you could do the same thing. Uh, one thing I find very useful with strace is to grep for open or stat. Um, seems like nine times out of ten, you're trying to find out where, where the program is getting some information. You know, where, where is it trying to get this information? Where is it getting this information? And so why is it failing? And so just grepping for open or stat in your strace output will tell you everything that it's trying to look at. And in this case, you'll see you'll, you, you, you would run across the same error, it can't open the file, permission denied. There's your clue, go check it out, look for a problem with the file. There's also a couple little tips for you. You can uh, specifically strace only files, uh, file actions for example. Uh, it's strace minus e, trace equals file. That'll just get the files 
you know, read writes, stats, that sort of thing. Uh, you could also uh, trace just the network activity. Uh, again, all in the name of isolating the issue as much as possible, uh, collecting as, li as little data as possible for you to have to sift through. Uh, another trick you can do, uh, just grep for equal space minus one in your output. Uh, that will show you just problems. Whenever a system call fails, you're going to see equal space minus one at the end of the message about it. Uh, it's not necessarily, you know, all equal space minus one entries you see in there are not necessarily problems. For example, a programmer may stat a file to see if it exists. Well, in strace, you're going to see that it failed, you know, doesn't exist, equals minus one. That doesn't mean that's a problem, but it means that we're looking for it. But it can be handy, and a lot of times you'll see it, it can't open a file for reading or writing, and then it is your problem. So we have a couple examples. If you do the two things here, if you chone to root the home user etsy domain file, and you also make immutable the var cpanel users file, it will cause two problems, not necessarily in that order. Uh, one will cause the box trapper enable button to, to seem to work but not really work. And the other will cause the user's theme to seem to change if you change it, but it, it fails silently. And so these are things you can try at home. Uh, use strace to figure out which of these conditions causes that problem, and, uh, and you'll see. Uh, another tool you want to use uh, when strace Apache, uh, have a, we have an example command line here for uh, strace Apache. It's a little, uh, it's a little more hairy because you have a lot of processes running sometimes. Uh, in that case, you want to well, you, all you can really need to do is change the big F to a little f, and what that'll ha cause to happen is that each HTTPD process will be put into a separate strace output file. Uh, this can be really handy in the case of a very busy server, for example. Um, you have a particular virtual host that's giving you problems. Well, each HTTP, HTTPD process is for one connection, essentially, to the user in the outside world. And so by putting them all into their own files, you can then grep for the domain name in question through those files and get just the process information relevant to the problem you're having. And here's an example of how that would work. And uh, essentially, you know, each process is one virtual host or one connection, to be more precise. Uh, if all the people visiting your server are visiting one virtual host, they'll all have to do with that particular domain. Uh, but you, then you can, you can get rid of a lot of the output that you don't need to work with. Uh, another tip for you, you may be tempted to strace easy Apache uh, but when you have trouble building something. This is not actually a crazy thing to do, but you probably don't want to output it to a file because you can get some extremely large, multiple tens of gigs of files. It can take a very long time as well. But what we'll often do is just strace it and then let it go to the terminal. Don't output, don't use the minus O switch. And what that'll do is at the end, where, where the problem probably happened, you can just scroll up in your terminal and look for the problem that way. Um, the first thing you'll want to do is look at the log file. But if the log file isn't telling you what you need, by all means, feel free to strace easy Apache. Uh, just let it go to your terminal. You'll probably find the problem near the end. Uh, another tip for you, you'll see inappropriate, uh, it looks like ioctal, IO control for a device. Um, early in my S-tracing career, I often, you know, would see that and freak out, wow, that sounds like a real problem, but uh, experience has taught me that no, it, it usually just isn't. Um, it, it really just, it just means a programmer is trying to write, you know, network, you know, file data to a network socket or something like that. They're, it may even just be a test. It, it doesn't really mean there's a problem per se. Uh, it, it's just, you know, it, it, S-Trace gets all the system calls, and it sees that in there, and it sees the error, so it tells you about it. Uh, but uh, in my experience, it's pretty rarely your actual problem, so just try not to think about it. On FreeBSD, uh, there, are, there is S-Trace compiled for FreeBSD. Uh, it's probably not the best tool. Uh, most people, see, uh, FreeBSD people, seem to prefer K-Trace, uh, which works a little differently. It always outputs to a binary file. You need a special tool to read it. Uh, you'll want to do a little research on that. But it's uh, very popular among people like FreeBSD a lot. It does the same thing. It has different kind of uh, formats and, and stuff, but it's the same concept. Uh, there's also Truss, which uh, has a syntax very similar to strace. And uh, a lot of people seem to like that as well in FreeBSD. And, uh, and it works almost identically to strace. That uh, should get you started in your career strace things. You'll be, you know, it's a little tricky at first. Uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of information that doesn't make any sense. I've just given you the barest overview. I mean, you can't, you can't communicate all this information, you know, in, in 20 minutes. It's just not possible. But, but
but the, the, the essence of it and hopefully some tricks and strategies to save you some time, uh, save you some of the time I wasted uh, learning how to use it.